talk about how exactly we can access or we can connect uh, to a particular Jenkins application here. So this is pretty much when we are logged into the uh, the particular user. So we have the dashboard coming around there. The moment you log out, so you will be forced up to a login screen and no information will be passed on to you. But uh, yes, you have to put the proper credentials, the proper access over here in order to proceed further and get the uh, dashboard up and running. So this is a full dashboard. Of course, it's an empty one because right now we don't have any kind of jobs created. But uh, it's like a, a kind of initial setup when you have a lot of uh, Jenkins jobs and different configurations present, then you will be not seeing this uh, particular segment here. Now, this is where it's asking you to create a new job. Like if you want to really create a new job, so it's asking you to uh, have some jobs created over here. Uh, because ultimately when it comes to the Jenkins, so it's all having the col collaboration and the compositions of different different Jenkins job. It's also asking me that if you going for the distributed build so you can set up the agents, uh, the slave agents, if you feel like you want to set up, you can do that, right? And uh, if you want to have the slaves on the cloud, so then you can configure a cloud also. So these are just in uh, particular options where it's asking us to start doing the configurations and the setups. On the left hand side, you have a very important screens like for example, new item, the same way to create a Jenkins job. So that's what we are defining there. Inside the people, we will be able to know like how many peoples are there. So as you can see, like uh, we have got some couple of a good amount of uh, people which has been created. These are the different users which we have created over here. Uh, you will be able to see the build history also if there are some couple of Jenkins jobs. So the build history will be definitely being populated over here. So we will be able to know like how many builds has been executed. What is the status of that? Uh, we have the file fingerprints when we are archiving uh, the files so we can also store the information about the file fingerprints that also we can store we can also go for the manage jenkins where, where we the most of the configurations really comes in the picture now manage jenkins is very important because uh, you can say this is a kind of a administrative portion of your jenkins of course if you're going to connect or if you are working as an administrator then only you will be having the access to this screen here now there are some couple of segments here the very first one is system configuration right so that's one thing which is available there second one is the security aspect then we have the stated information the troubleshooting and then tools and actions right so let's start from those options which we don't use uh, pretty much very frequent there the very first option is prepare to shut down now this prepare for shutdown is uh, required when you are actually going for the shutdown activity so you're saying that okay I wanted to perform a shutdown activity so you wanted to put some banner now again it's not going to uh, put any kind of disruption or it's going to restart your Jenkins uh, it's just going to uh, make sure that the new builds are not going to be triggered so that's kind of a temporary pause which will be performed over here in this one so that's a purpose of uh, the uh, particular uh, this option here also if uh, you wanted to have some information passed on to the people that what exactly uh, you know like uh, the execution or how exactly we can uh, have these different uh, uh, guides restarts or the bounces which we want to manage so depending on that also we are trying to see like okay this is the way that how we handle the stuff there right and then we have the reload configuration from disk now what happens is that usually uh, we actually do a lot of configurations in the browser in the uh, web application but we also have the configurations in the XML based on the file system so if you feel like you want to do the changes or the modifications you can do there and uh, once the changes once the modification is done then after that you can just simply reload the uh, configuration from the disk so that's something we can do over here so that we can understand that how these configurations or changes are really going to work there. We also have the Jenkins CLI. Now, when you go for the Jenkins CLI, so this is a way that where you want to, uh, as an administrator, you wanted to do some bulk activities, some bulk uh, setups or mechanisms. So that's also like something which you can do over here in this. So Jenkins CLI uh, can help you to perform like uh, through the command lines whatever we are doing in the uh, GUI from the browser. So the same thing can be done to the CLI, but again, it's very limited and the options are also not that much uh, extensive, but uh, yes, it can do the similar kind of activities for you. 
and uh, on top of that uh, it will it's very easy for you to script it up and hard code these all different information as such here and then we have the script console so this script console will uh, basically help you to see like how the configurations can be done so if you have the understanding about the uh, Jenkins classics uh, and uh, you have the understanding about the Java source code then you can easily do the activities not from the browser or the command line but with the help of source code here so using the source code you are going to handle up all these different configurations as such over here in this one so this is the kind of uh, benefits which you're going to get over here when it comes to this uh, setup altogether so that's the kind of workaround which we can perform here now after this one we have a troubleshooting like um, there are a lot of uh, uh, data which actually remains from due to the old uh, plugins you have done some uh, plugins upgrade or maybe an uninstallation of plugins so sometimes some data remains into your a file system into your environment so if you really wanted to get rid of that and you don't want to pick those values so in that case you can have the option that uh, you can manage the old data which is there from the uh, previous installations from the previous Jenkins so you can easily pick those things up and say like okay this is not something which we wanted to go we wanted to have it over here so that we can uh, come up with the fact that how these things or these implementations can be done can be performed here so this is uh, again right now there is no data so that's why we don't have anything else present over here as such in this case then we have the system information the purpose of having the system information is very simple that it's uh, actually going for the uh, setup where we can say like uh, how exactly the uh, system information uh, we can get over here like uh, the environment variables the different values experts for example you go for the system information when you go to the system information you will be able to know like what is the uh, system uh, particular properties which is available there and uh, you know how exactly we can see like uh, uh, you know like how the overall configurations uh, we can do um, like how we, you know this is a way that uh, we are trying to manage because ultimately from this uh, we will be able to know like what are the different attributes we have got here so these are the environment variables as you can see and you will also be able to know like what are the different plugins what are the different uh, plugins configurations which we have done which we have performed over here in this one so these are the different plugins which is enabled if it's not enabled that also we will be able to know but you're going to get a kind of summary over here that what are the different plugins available there so that's very beneficial for you because again ultimately it helps you to get along like how these configurations and uh, the you know the changes can be done and uh, we can perform the overall modifications as such here so that's that's a kind of a benefit which you're going to get over here in in this scenario as such in this one so that's the kind of work around here so here of course in the bottom you will be able to see the memory uses right so uh, the uh, red one is the used one and the blue one is the total one so you will be able to know like how much memory you are basically using and uh, you know the details are going to be provided over here so that you will be able to know like how the executions and the setups we can do and we can achieve here now again this is something which is flexible because it's giving you the uh, workaround like how the uh, overall uh, uses is going to be available there of course this is going to change over the period of time this will definitely change here because uh, the more and more uh, executions the more and more builds we will be running uh, it will be performing and it will be doing the changes as such here so that's an, another way that how these things are going to be managed and going to be performed here in this one now again we can go for the system logs so if you want to see the logs so you can see over here that how these logs are really going to provide you the values so in this one you will also be able to know that how the executions is uh, really going to be performed it's going to be uh, executed over here now in this one we are getting a proper information like how the uh, changes how the overall modifications uh, can be performed you will be able to see like all these different logs over here so these logs are very important because ultimately it helps us to see like how the configurations can be done can be performed here so that's a kind of uh, you know setup we are trying to do we are trying to manage it up here now it's very important because ultimately it's uh, going to provide you the details like how, how these tools are how these logs are going to help you to provide the information so i can click on this 
and I can see the detail logs here like whatever the logs I feel like I wanted to process so that's the uh, kind of details which we will be able to get over here so these details are very important because ultimately it gives you the understanding that how these uh, particular attributes or how these uh, logs files are going to be used for the troubleshooting you if you have the access then definitely from the server also you can access these logs but uh, if you don't have the access to the logs then in that case you will be able to use this one you will be able to perform the uh, executions right away over here in this case so that's also one way of managing the stuff here load statistics if there is any kind of uh, load statistics which is available there so that's also like something which we will be able to know right so right now we is we don't have much uh, builds which is running there so that's why we don't have much stats coming up over here but again it's like very important because it gives you the flexibility that uh, how the uh, executions can be done and uh, we can get the uh, particular uh, configurations uh, performed over here in this case so that's also like uh, you know what we are trying to do we are trying to consider it up over here so again you can go for the about Jenkins so here also you will be able to know the details about uh, the typical Jenkins so uh, what is the uh, particular plugins which is being installed so you're getting the information regarding that and it's just an information for you maybe there is no purpose of these information because when you're going for the CICD pipeline these informations are not going to be used these are just in uh, supplementary details which you can use and you can utilize as such so that's the real purpose of having this uh, particular mechanism or setup here as such next we have the security now in the security we have the global uh, security configure global security where we have the uh, particular uh, configurations for the security so if you select here you will be having the options the important configuration which is available here is that you need to configure the security then which is for the authentication and we also have the authorization that how these configurations we really wanted to manage so that's also like something we can handle that how these authorizations can be taken care of and uh, we can perform the changes all together so that's a kind of work which we are going to manage and we are going to consider it up here right so anyone can do anything like i say these, these are different options which is available where we can handle like how the global configurations can be done here right now again we have the managed credentials where we will be configuring the credentials these credentials are required for third-party integrations with the uh, jenkins so that's what we are going to use we also have the managed users where we are managing like how the user management can be done how the users can be created so that's what uh, we can manage here uh, in the system configuration we have the configure system where the overall Jenkins configurations can be handled what are the different configurations we feel like we want to do so we can configure it up over there we also have a global tool configuration where we wanted to see like how the tool configurations can be done so this global tool configuration is something where we can uh, integrate our build tools we can perform the configurations for the different build tools here and then we have the manage plugins so these manage plugins uh, is something where we can see like how the different plugins we can handle up like how the overall configurations can be done now when it comes to the manage plugin so we are trying to understand that how the plugins uh, can be managed and uh, plugins can be performed here so that's why we are going for the manage plugins uh, we also have managed nodes and nodes where we wanted to go for the uh, distributed builds so we can go for the distributed builds and we can perform that setup right so these are the various configurations which is pretty much available there where we can handle up like how the Jenkins configurations can be handled up and can be performed here so that's it uh, for this demo guys thank you